Welcome to Silent Symptoms, a black mental health podcast. I am your host, Kataso Fridge, a Florida-based therapist. This podcast focuses on mental health, stigmas, and social injustices that affect the black community. This podcast was created to bring awareness about mental health and can be used as an educational guide, but this is not to be used as a replacement for seeking help from a therapist. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hi, welcome to another episode of Silent Symptoms, a black mental health podcast. Today on the pod, I'm going to be talking about the misconception of black people and the misconception of therapy that black people have. Do you guys understand? Are you with me? So, okay. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this, because I did an Instagram live about two weeks ago and I talked about why I created Solid Symptoms. So I, I'm going to reiterate it. So in my intro, I talk about why I want to do Solid Symptoms because of social injustices and all of the things that black people experience. So as black people, when we first, you know, came about we were the first people, hey, and I don't care what anybody else says. But when, you know, um, I first started the podcast, I was seeing a lot of revolving doors in the black community. I was seeing a lot of going around the circle. Like it really wasn't anything that we were doing to assist the perception of what other people think of us. And what I'm saying is that because when I work in the mental health field, it's really prevalent. I see a lot of black people go in and out the doors of mental health facilities. And most of the time they feel like they don't need help. Now I understand that black people are the most misdiagnosed individuals ever the most misdiagnosed race. So let's not get that twisted. What I will say is that we need to stop as a community continuing to perpetuate the cycle of generational curses, generational trauma, however you want to word that. Because at the end of the day, when we continue to create the cycle of unawareness, we're continuing to push the narrative the people have about us and I created silent symptoms because we always suffer in silence why do we have to suffer in silence because you know our voice has always been diminished we going back to the days of slavery we used to be queens and kings and run the show but because of generational trauma that we have you know passed on from generational to, from generation to generation it has not gotten any better we have allowed our family members to live and become destructive. And once we became destructive, we allowed ourselves to continue that pattern with our children. And another destructive thing that I want to say is that we have to con- stop doing the things that we feel like is necessary in the black community. You don't have to haze your children to you know, be a a strict parent. You don't have to do any of that. And I want to say this because let's go back. We go back to, you know, all the times that we have always been mistreated. We'll stand back to slavery. We were sold. We were embarrassed. We were separated from our families. We were told that we weren't worthy. We were treated as though we like I don't even have the words to even formulate how deep the trauma goes with the situation we have been so mistreated to the point where we have continued to mistreat ourselves we have continued to treat therapy and the necessary help that we need as sinful and shameful and we have allowed religion to also take over our perceptions we have to realize that in order for us to get help we have to also um let go of the notion that god will take care of it all because god placed those people on this earth to be able to assist you with the things that you need we have to let go of the fact that we going to rely on our pastor to fix our problems because a pastor is still a human being. They are not a supernatural being. And sometimes pastors are not trained to be professionals as far as with therapy. I mean, they can coach you. They can give advice. They can do all that. And I commend them for taking on the torch when people are in need. However, they're 
role is ministry. So that's something totally different. They're they're taught to teach Bible, right? So when somebody actually gets in your head and asphyxiates you into thinking that the only thing that you need right now is religion, there's something wrong with that. If you are going to continue to um, be involved in a church, make sure it's one that is good for your well-being. Now, there's people who can preach really well, but there's also people who can manipulate really well. So we have to be able to walk that fine line and realize where we stand. So you have to be able to go to your pastor and your pastor say, hey, I'm giving all all of this spiritual counseling because it works hand in hand. So when you have your spirituality, spirituality doesn't also necessarily mean religion. It talks about the essence of who you are as an individual. Are you that whole happy-go-lucky person? Are you the person that loves baseball? That person likes basketball, watching TV, having fun with your kids, and doing all the necessary things. And then comes therapy, right? You have a spiritual part of you, and then you have a part where you need to get fixed or alleviated of some things that's where therapy comes in. So, black people, we have gotten to the point where we have stressed ourselves and our family members because we have not sought help. Please don't think that um, when you go into therapy, you're being judged or therapy is white people stuff. I want to continue to stress this. If I've said this before in my other podcasts, forgive me. This has been on my heart because it's so disheartening for people like myself to go into work every single day and then see other populations come into therapy to resolve the issues that do not want to pass on to their children. But we as black people... We hold ourselves hostage because we don't want people to know our business. We don't want people to know that our family has been disruptive. There's a pattern of disruption and we don't want anybody else to judge us. We would rather our children suffer. We would rather our sisters and brothers suffer than for us to sit down with someone who can help us. And I'm not saying that therapy is the end all be all because it's not. It's actually the beginning of something greater. So that is like the stepping stone to the next level. When people can communicate together therapeutically, they can handle anything. They can move forward in their life as a unit. They can move forward as a family unit. Whether this is relationship or mother-daughter dynamic, children dynamic, whomever. Therapy is just that beginning phase to allow people to express themselves as they should with no judgment and such empathetic and compassionate listening for somebody who is there for you. I decided I wanted to be a therapist because I saw the things that most people ignore. We have people in our neighborhoods or the neighborhood that we grew in grew up in that are sitting on the porch right now and having alcohol the whole day just drinking their lives away we have people in our neighborhoods that are walking around running around butt naked we don't understand they're doing things that are destructive disruptive hurtful and we don't get it We say, oh, that's just such and such. She's always been that way. So maybe can we reference that and say maybe that's a mental illness? Can we at least try to get our uncle's brother's sister some help? Can we actually get away from what we have been numbed to and what we have created as a norm? Can we get away from that? Because I will say that when we when, when I step into the office and, you know, there are other, you know, racists that come voluntarily, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. They are here to get help. Not because they have to, but they want to. And then when I see people like myself come in, I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I here? That's what they're looking like. 
And now, once they see a person like myself, as somebody of color, they're more inclined to open up about all the traumas they have experienced. Not right away, but along the way. And we all have to start somewhere. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a hard road. We just choose the hard way sometimes. And I know a lot of beautiful black men and women that are showing up and showing out and going to therapy. I know a lot of people who are doing what they can to break those generational curses or generational traumas that were inflicted on them. And they had no say so. And they have decided to stop it and end it right there. And they may have realized that, oh, I'm being very toxic right now. And I am really inflicting my traumas on my children, on my loved ones. And then they go get help. There's nothing wrong with getting that help. When silent symptoms just stemmed in my head, like I just feel like it was just put in my head because there was a lot of things I was really looking at as far as a dynamic as a therapist, like what is really going on within our family systems as black people, right? And I think that we are just one of the greatest creatures created in beautiful melanin like skin, just beautiful beings and the essence of who we are is amazing and we were here to create a life that is very fruitful and very um, collaborative with our families because we cannot self-destruct we have to really look into who we really are right and you know, we have to also be able to call each other out. Because oftentimes we were told by our family members or our parents not to disrespect our adults. And by speaking our minds, even in a tone that is not disrespectful, we're told that we're disrespectful because we're talking about the things that people don't want to say out loud. Sometimes it takes saying, hey, I think our uncle is an alcoholic. Hey, I think, um... Joe Blow is using drugs or I think that you know Susie or Sally is depressed and has anxiety and they cannot overcome this on their own can we get them help I want us to get to a place where we don't allow the perceptions that we have created ourselves to interrupt where we can go we are successful We are the leaders. We are mentally sound enough to know what's right from wrong. So we also have to continue to take responsibility and not suffer in silence. When we suffer in silence, we harbor our feelings that create distress within our family system. You cannot successfully move forward in life if you have been traumatized and you continue to live in that trauma. And it happens more unintentionally in the unconscious, more than it does in the conscious. Somebody can live for 65 years and still you know, be able to be stoic about things that they've gone through. Somebody could have been abused and, you know, made a way out of no way and they have made life happen. And nobody will ever know they've gone through this stuff, but it will manifest one way or another. We may be able to run away from what we think is not hanging on our back. We keep running this marathon. The monkey keeps falling off, but it's like riding our coattail. We may be able to outrun that monkey, but that monkey's still going to still run behind us. So that's the concept that I want people to see. We may be able to run away, but it'll be close right on our heels or getting on our shoulders or stepping on us. It could be right now, 
or it could be 10 years from now, or it could be on our deathbed. It happens. I have seen it. Only because we wanted to continue to, you know, keep things a secret in the family or let's not go to therapy because black people don't do that. We just pray about it because pastor said it'll be all right. Let's not go there. Let's give a chance to ourselves to create an environment that will be fruitful for the ones that come behind us. For the ones that are watching, we may be able to operate on a high level. And I'm not saying all black people are traumatized. This is not what I'm saying, but we have been through trauma. There's nowhere in our lineage where we have not been traumatized. It doesn't matter if we come from Africa, from England, um, America. It doesn't matter where we come from. We could be black Indians and we're still traumatized because of our lineage. So we have to be able to understand the essence of who we are and how we're going to move forward in such a way that it creates An environment where we're able to successfully grow without going backwards. And that means kicking ourselves in the butt and saying, enough is enough. We've been through too much. I love us. And this is why I'm saying what I'm saying. I love us. And I love my other counterparts, all my other races, but there's something about being connected to the blackness of my skin, to the essence of who I am. That it creates such a passion for me that I have to speak on it so that we can move accordingly. And, you know, therapy is a personal choice and therapy is not for everyone. We have to also understand that. And if there are family dynamics that could be resolved on a lower level to a point where you just talk to your pastor and the issue passes, that's fine too. But we cannot go through very traumatic situations where we're not grieving or going through things where we're... Um, disregarding the people that are around us and you know talking about all the trauma that you have experienced in your childhood and you're not able to move forward in such a way that is disruptive to where we can be like being a black woman as a therapist I get to see a lot of things from a totally different perspective and it just gives me such a greater appreciation of being who I am as a black woman because and when I say this because like I feel like black women and black men are so beautiful we are so beautiful and the opportunity that we give ourselves to have a fighting chance in this race and we may seem like we're just falling behind on because obviously external factors that we don't have a control over but we're not going to allow the biases created by us based on the color of our own skin hinder us for where we could be trauma is real trauma cuts deep and we have to be able to understand how far it goes thank you guys for tuning into the podcast this one was very serious right to the heart and I really do appreciate you guys taking this into consideration and see how it fits into your life and see how it affects you your family members someone that is not okay being able to talk to someone that we know is not fully where they need to be and they're going through something they're in a deep depression or they're struggling with alcoholism drug use 
anxiety, just severe things. Let's not ignore that and normalize the things that are not okay. This is why I created this platform to talk to us and find a way to be relatable to who we truly are. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. You can catch us on Anchor and all your favorite media streams. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Silent Symptoms Podcast. Let us know if you have any feedback or topics that you would like to hear. 